On our recent trip to Ethiopia, we set out to explore a few monasteries located by the bank of Lake Tana in Baharda city. Lake Tana is the source of the Blue Nile and is the largest lake in Ethiopia. It's famous for the various monasteries that dot its many islands. To begin our quest, we first cut up with our local guide, who briefed us on the theological tourist attractions that abound in Baharda city. It is the biggest lake in Ethiopia, with a total area of 3,600 square kilometers. And Baharda is just on the south of the lake. Yeah. So from south to the north, it's about 75 kilometers. Whoa. And from west to the, to the east, it's about 65 kilometers. It's kilometers. Is it it's the deep? average is 14 meters. Not so deep like the lakes in the south, yeah. but this is 14 uh, meters deep, the, the average. Okay. And uh, about 37 islanders and about 22 monasteries and churches all around the Lake Tana. And most of the monasteries are found between the 14th and the 16th centuries. From Lake Tana, we headed to Zege Peninsula by a speedboat. Hi, the viewers. This is a very exciting episode of Goge Africa. We are here at Zege Monastery, and beside me here is our guide. He's going to take us through this trip. So you stay with us and have a good time. We docked on the peninsula, and from there, walked through a rocky path dotted with enterprising vendors who were ready to sell creatively designed souvenirs to any willing tourists. Obviously, the young ones have imbibed skills of their parents with their peddling of miniature tanqua, a papyrus boat used by locals. The trek was an enduring one, but we heaved a euphoric sigh of relief when we stood facing a freestanding double-arched entryway of a 16th century monastery. Uh, this is uh, Orakidamrit Monastery Church, okay. which is founded in 14th century uh, by a monk, Abba Johannes. And uh, painting is in the 16th century. We'll see the innermost side, and it is uh, the traditional way of rounding. So this is the main gate, which means the Jerusalem, the place where when you enter church, just you place your face by the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. The first captivation at Ura Kiden Miret Monastery is the seven egg mast, which signifies seven days of creation and the seven sacraments. It is housed above the circular architecture with a straw attached roof. Our attention was also arrested by two classical bells, which were cut from rock. The curator at the monastery demonstrated how their contrasting sounds are used for different occasions. Stone bell before the iron bell comes. Oh, yeah. So uh, it is a different sound. If I make uh, hardly and continuously, maybe the local people come together because maybe sudden things happen yeah. from okay. the church. So uh, this is... Uh, To enter the ambulatory from where we walked to Magdas, the Holy of Holies, the curator asked us to take off our shoes. Just yes, the place is a holy place, just you have to remove your shoes. Your shoes. So that comes from Moses. That's right. Yeah, the right. Prophet Moses, just he's uh, leading the people in that time. That's right. The Magdas houses the altar, the Holy Sacrament, and the Ark of Covenant while the entire walls are heavily laden with cosmic symbolism dating back to about 100 to 250 years. They uh, painted on 16th century, but the lower part retouched in the 19th century, repainted, because they with contact with hands, so it's damaged or by termites, so 
The upper is very important. So you have to repaint it. Repaint it. The north section is dedicated to the martyrs with embellished paintings illustrating their courageous deeds. So uh, St. Peter crucified upside down, Paul beheaded, Nathanael hunger, Bartholomew thrown in the water, Thaddeus is hunger like that, Jacob stoned like St. Stephen, yeah. and here is Thaddeus, Matthews, Andreas, St. Tom, his skin, Matthias fired, Philip torched down, Jacob. There are two Jacobs, the son of Sabrius and Ilfeus. So they are the different ways of killing or suffering. Like a candle, just they burn. Mm -hmm. So, but they give a light for people. That's right. So for their religious, they uh, suffer from. The North Door is also called the Bethlehem Door, since Jesus was born in the Northeast. The south section of the Magdas is dedicated to the Virgin Mary, who plays a prominent role in Orthodox Christian faith. Women are given the honor to stand close to the mother of Jesus Christ. The east section is the parishioners. It is also the site direction of the priest during mass. The drums on the west section are equally symbolic as explained by the curator. The meaning it has is, this is the body of Jesus. Bed of. The body of Jesus. When body Jesus, Jesus died, yeah. he is the body of Jesus. And this is the clothes when they, yeah, when they buried it, they, they used they to cover okay. with this clothes. And this is when they wipe him. Is suffering, this is a symptom on his body okay. during the crucifixion time. And this is the trade when they tie it on, on his body. So whenever they make like this, it's a strong people just say spite him. Okay. Yeah, clamp, clamp him, him. So this is and also this is from New Testament and Old Testament just to show you. Yeah. Very symbolic. Very symbolic. Ura Kiden Miret is a very small monastery, but a visit to it is worth all the toil. As we headed back to the beautiful city of Baharga, we were fulfilled that we visited a treasure island which holds compelling historical and spiritual links that one can't find in our modern world. Africa. 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 It's the only thing I want to hear. It's the only thing I want to say. Go get Africa is for Africa and it's about Africa. Go get Africa for Africa. <laughs> The equator is an imaginary line that divides the world into two halves. This line passes through 13 countries, including Uganda in East Africa. On our recent travels, we visited the Uganda equator, located in Kayabwe, Mpiki district, about 72 kilometers from Kampala, the capital city. This is the equator in the village of Buama. As you see, we have lots of tourists. It's a very popular tourist site right here in Uganda. So you stay with us. Let me see what the equator is all about. Don't go away. In Uganda, one can bestride the equator line with one foot in the northern hemisphere and the other in the southern hemisphere. Hi, the viewers. We're still at the Ugandan equator and we are right here, halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. Yeah. We also witnessed an exceptional experiment of how water drains at different halves of the globe. I'm going to show you what we call geographical water experiment. As now we are standing at the Northern Hemisphere side, okay. Northern Hemisphere, if I pour water on top of this funnel here, which says, did you know, mm -hmm. you see the water draining 
clockwise direction. Okay. Then as we go to the southern hemisphere, mm -hmm. it will change the direction and drains anti-clockwise. Wow. Then on the zero latitude line, there won't be any movement. Water will just stay still and drop straight up. That's to prove that you're right at the center of the whole world. So let me pour water here and we see what I've been telling you. Okay. Okay, and then after pouring, the reason why I pour this metal is just to make the water still. See that there is no any movement of pouring to make it calm down. Then after make the water calm down, I drop this flower. You can use anything. It can show the rotation, you can see now. Everything which is light can, can work, can show the direction. You can see now, we use the flower to show the movement. All the northern hemisphere side, even if you're in Canada, even if you're in Germany, even if you're in the UK, it has to be like that as you flush your toilet. Wow. Even in your sink, all right? Mm -hmm. Now let's cross the line, the line and go to the other side and see whether it will change and goes the other round. Okay. Yeah, right. Let's go that side. Okay. And now we want to see at the southern what will happen, whether the water will change and goes the other round. It goes anti-clockwise direction. Okay. And then after pouring also, I have to do the same thing. I have to stabilize the water. Mm -hmm. See that there is no any movement of pouring. I have to make it still. Then also, you put this flower again and see, oh, are you getting the chain? Wow. Yeah. And mostly the farther you move from the equator, that's the faster it goes, or the faster it spins. For example, if you're in Rwanda, if you're in South Africa, Australia, Argentina, or the southern, it has to be like that, but very fast, because you're far from the zero degree latitude. Mm. And now we need to prove it at the center and see what happens when you're right at the middle of the globe. Let's do that and see what happens. Yeah. Right on the zero latitude, we'll see what happens with the water when you are at the center of the globe. Exactly. Okay. All right, and then I have to stabilize the water to do the same thing as I did the northern and the southern. Yes. So I want to see whether there won't be any movement on the line. Okay. And yet, and yet the same thing. They say when you stand on this line here, your body weight is less by three percent. What? You're lighter because the centrifugal force makes you lighter when you are on the zero latitude line. All right, then after stabilizing also, let's put our flower and see what exactly happens. You got it. There's no rotation because right at the center of the whole world. And then we, ha we have got two days in the year. There is March 21 mm -hmm. and September 23rd. Mm -hmm. That's when the sun rises and sets directly above the equator line. So at midday, when you stand here, you don't see your shadow. You'll be shadowless, because that's when the sun is directly on top of your head. It's just twice a year. Twice from the east, March 21 and September 23rd. And yet this line traverses only 10 countries all over the whole world, and six of them in Africa. Oh, really? So, so in Africa, I've got Uganda, yeah. got Kenya, got Somalia, got Gabon, Congo DLC, and Congo Brazzaville. Then from Africa goes to Indonesia, Colombia, Ecuador and Brazil. Other parts are oceans, you know, Pacific, Indian and Atlantic Ocean. Sorry, you said 10 countries. 10 countries, ten countries. Six, six, six exactly. Exactly, exactly. Wow. You're most so local. we are really at the center of the world. This is the line which divides the world into two equal parts. Most wow. welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Viewers, you're blessing. welcome to the center of the world. Exactly, <laughs> most welcome. And, um, it's also important that you visit here sometimes so you can lose 3% three three of your weight. Body weight. Yes. Of your body weight. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> amazing, absolutely amazing. You're welcome, well, you're still on to go gay Africa, don't you go away. Stay with us. You're welcome. María, eh, soy de España y estoy viendo Goy África.
On travel tips, here are some transport tips on getting around Ethiopian cities like a local. Tuk Tuk. Convenient tricycles called Tuk Tuk are common in many towns. A seat in a shared bajaj across town shouldn't cost more than two Ethiopian bill or two cents. Minibus. In many of the larger towns also, minibus service provides a quick, convenient and cheap way of hopping around. Fares are around one Ethiopian bill or one cent for short journeys. Horse-drawn carts. Although garries or horse-drawn carts are commonly used for transporting goods, having a taste of the few dedicated to tourists can be a pleasure ride. As you look forward to that trip to Ethiopia, be rest assured you can get around the cities without hurting your pockets. Bon voyage! Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Thank you. 